Hello, my name is Dr. Sonia McKeeja, and I was the principal investigator for the network study, Prevalence of Questionable Occlusal Caries Lesions. I'll give a brief overview of the study, and then Dr. Kay Shaw, a network practitioner who participated in the study, will go over the results. The term questionable is defined as a tooth with no cavitation and no radiographic radiolucencies, but the presence of caries is suspected due to roughness, surface opacities, or staining. Although these types of lesions are faced by practitioners daily, and this topic was of interest to many practitioners, there have been few studies regarding the characteristics of these lesions, only one examining their progression, and no studies describing their prevalence. As a result, there's no firm consensus on how to best manage these types of lesions. The relatively slow progression of occlusal caries, in general, argue for a more conservative approach. One of the studies looking at the progression of these lesions is the Hamilton study found in JADA. Over a two-year observation period, half of the identified questionable lesions were followed with no intervention except when the lesion was deemed to have progressed to a definitive carious lesion. The results showed that after two years, only 16% of these lesions progressed into the dentin. So knowing how often these lesions occur and how they're diagnosed and treated can lead to improvements in management. Our results indicate that questionable lesions are common in everyday practice. Therefore, their proper treatment would have a significant public health impact. Non-surgical measures could be more impactful than early surgical treatment. This study was conducted by 82 network dentists and hygienists in their offices. The practitioners logged the number of unrestored surfaces on each patient as well as the number of questionable lesions, if any. Information was also recorded about patient and lesion characteristics on consented patients who had a questionable lesion. Practices surveyed patients for about two and a half months and saw an average of 55 patients per month. I'll now turn it over to Dr. Kay Shaw who will go over the results of the study. My name is Dr. Kay Shaw and I'm a general dentist in Fairhope, Alabama. I was one of the investigators in the questionable occlusal caries studies. Overall, practice saw over 7,000 patients of which 2,300 had questionable lesions, which translates into a patient level prevalence of 34%. This was significant across the various regions of the network. The Permanente Dental Associate region, which is a large group practice in the Washington and Oregon area, had the lowest prevalence at 16%. About half of the lesions were opened in this region and they had the highest percentage of enamelplasties and sealants. These findings are in contrast to the Alabama, Mississippi and Florida, Georgia regions which had a patient level prevalence of more than 40%. They opened about a quarter of their lesions. The Minnesota region opened 10% of their lesions and the Denmark region only opened 5%. As you can see, more than two thirds of these lesions were found on molars. When asked about the luster of the tooth, one half were chalky and one half were shiny. When asked about the color of the lesions, most lesions were either yellow, light brown, or dark brown and black. When asked about age used in making but not confirming their diagnosis of questionable lesion, most all practitioners used air drying and a dental explorer. About half used magnification and radiographs. For those lesions that were treated non-invasively, meaning that the tooth structure was not altered. Most were monitored, followed by oral hygiene instruction. For those lesions that were treated invasively, meaning tooth structures were altered, more than half received a full restoration and one third received enamelplasty. When asked about lesion depth for those that were treated invasively, it was interesting to note that almost half of these lesions had either no caries or caries limited only to enamel. This is important because so many of the lesions that were open may have benefited from being managed through non-surgical means. So what lessons have we learned from this study? Well, we have learned that the prevalence of questionable lesions is substantial with significant regional variations. Patient level prevalence 
ranged from 16 to 42% among the regions with an overall prevalence of 34%. Practices surveyed 55 patients per month who had unrestored occlusal surface, which translates to 19 questionable lesions per month. This was the first study to quantify the prevalence of questionable occlusal lesions on routine practice. These results document a high prevalence overall with wide variation in prevalence among former network regions. For more information, please contact our website at nationaldentalpbrn.org. Thank you.